better for us. Don't try to stay here. Make preparation for leaving. Do the best you can in God, because you will leave. After 30 years, I've done funerals for a 30-day-old baby and a 100-year-old woman and all in between. I tell you that every time I've done a service, a part of me went away. I feel like eventually I'll go too. But I heard the Lord say to me that what went away was not as good as what has come to you. I had something better for you. And so I've become better through these services because I opened myself up to Christ. So Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Listen, beloved, you should know that every encounter with another person is an opportunity for discipleship. We can have some small talk about the weather and sports events and sales going on at the mall, but you should invite the person to Orange United Methodist Church, and he or she will tell you whether or not they're attending a church already. Don't ever ask, are you attending a church? That's the wrong question. What you should say is, would you come and join me at Orange United Methodist Church on Sunday? We'd love to have you. I'd like to think of people as being pre-Christian because pre-Christian is the best designation because you can deal with them in a different way, a way that defines grace and love. Boy, if we don't do it out of love, we might as well not do it at all. Here's a story. We were serving in Oxford, not in and I noticed a man attending the worship service with this very faithful woman. One Sunday after getting to know him, I said to him, Brother Birch, I said, I've been looking through the church rules and I see that your wife is a member, but not you. He said, no, I'm not a member. I said, why not? He said, well, nobody never asked me. And so I said, well, would you join? And he goes like, yes. I said, wow, my jaw dropped. <laughs> and he said, next Sunday, I've got a time for the following Sunday. I will be here. And he did. He came and he joined. And he wound up being the trustee chair eventually. A very faithful man. Others didn't believe it. Many people thought he was a member of the church. And nobody said to him. But let me be clear. That I care more about people becoming Christian that I care about them being united Methodists. Because they don't ask what denomination you are in heaven. They don't want to know. I think it was Ted Campbell, one of the great theologians of the church, who said about our seminaries, he said these seminaries do a wonderful job of creating united Methodists, but a terrible job about creating Christians. Beloved, our work is about creating Christians. It's not so much United Methodists. Here's something you can take to your friends. That if you die and you get to a place, and at the gates, they want to know the denomination you are, you're in hell! Because in hell, they want to know what denomination you are so they can keep you divided. Because hell is about chaos. It's about separating. It's about demeaning people. It's about one theology being greater than the other. It's about one pastor having more members than another. But in heaven, we don't care about that. It doesn't matter. Beloved, we must be seeking people without any regard to who they are. Because if we do, our search will be wonderful. It will be faithful. Joyful. Here's a bumper sticker that you can use. Be ye fishers of people. You catch it and you will clean. Our responsibility is simply to connect people with Christ. 
It's not to clean them up. If they could do that on their own, they wouldn't need the church. They wouldn't need Jesus Christ. But this goes against the theology that we believe in. We think that we want people to clean up. No. Remember the hymn, I think it's about 357, it said, Just as I am without one plea. It has nothing to do with what you have on or what you have in. Once you get the heart right, the rest of it will change. Here's something controversial. The statues that have been torn down and defaced and all that. Listen, there are people on both sides who are good people and bad people on both sides of this argument. But if we don't change the hearts of the people on both sides, we are wasting our time. Change the heart and everything else changes. Take the heart of stone and turn it to heart of flesh that will love without limit, love without regard, love without color or economic status. That's what we need to change hearts. Removing a statue or leaving one there isn't going to change anything, but the heart will. We've been divided a whole lot more. This is political season than any I've ever seen. And we have Republicans here, Democrats here, Independents here. They don't act that in heaven either. Not at all. Doesn't matter where we're going. We want to be the best disciples we can be now. So let's be about getting on about the work of the Almighty. So here's another story. Here's a husband and wife. They're traveling on I-95 in South Carolina. They're headed north. The wife becomes violently ill. The husband speeds up looking for one of those signs, the huge H that says hospital, so she can get off. He can get off at the exit and help his wife. Well, a few more miles after many miles of speeding, he sees an H. He exits. He pulls into the parking lot of this huge structure. He never noticed for a moment that there were no cars in the parking lot. He jumps out the car and runs to the emergency room door and bams on the door as loud as he could, screaming and hollering without any response. A woman having a walk that morning saw him, and she said to him, Excuse me, sir. Now that hospital went out of business two weeks ago. He took a deep breath. And he said to her in response, if they went out of business, why didn't they take down the sign? What I'm trying to say to you is if we're not going to be about the work of Jesus Christ in the church and in the world, then take down the sign. Let's become something else. A social club. Let's become a golf club, a sorority, a fraternity, or something. For the work of Christ is about risk taking. It's about care taking too. It's about undertaking as well. But if we're not going to be about the work of Christ, then we need to change where we are. Dietrich Bonhoeffer has this wonderful quote, and I'll offer it so you can hear it in full. And I quote. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. It may be a death like that of the first disciples who had to leave home and work to follow him. Or maybe it would be like Luther's who had to leave the monastery, go out into the world. But it is the same death every time. Death in Jesus Christ, the death of the old man, and it's called. Close quote. This is a radical call to discipleship, my sisters and brothers. When we promise to commit to follow Jesus, we are saying we are willing to live and die as he lived and died. For this life is not ours. Not at all. When we say, Christ, I give my whole self to you, we become a living sacrifice. 
for Jesus Christ. Stephen this first martyr of the Christian church had this wonderful name. He died telling people about what God is intending. And it is not for us to live a mediocre life, but an extraordinary life. And it has nothing to do with what we have at home or bank or who our last name is, our skin color. Whether we are Methodist or Baptist or Catholic, it doesn't matter. God has more for us, and we can receive it simply by saying, Yes, Lord, do what you will with me. A friend of mine said to me, He said, How does an enemy pay you? And I said, Well, weekly. He said, You mean like, Four times a month, and I said no. Uh, w e a k l y. But friends, we're not in this for the money. For what I don't get from Amity, I get from God. Because I found out I don't need as much to live on as when I lived in the world. I've never had enough. I've made good money, and I've never had enough. Now, I make not so good amount of money, but I always have more than I need. I'm always giving, and I'm always getting. I want to close with this story. This friend of mine, Bill Jones, he said he wasn't related, but all the Joneses all of us. A woman in the church told me years ago, she said, when I was a little girl, my father told me that when God created people, he named them all Jones. And when they sinned, he changed their name. <laughs> anyway, Bill said to me that God is at work in us. And all we have to do is have a listening ear and a willing heart. He said, one of the church members said to him one day, he said, Dr. Jones, I see that you always give it. Every time I look, you give it. He said, well, when you love God and you love people, you love yourself, you give. Because if you don't empty yourself, God can't give you more. He said, I'm always giving. And you notice that. He said, yes, sir. That. He said, did you also know that I always have it again? Oh. Beloved, I'm telling you that if you give it away, God will make sure you got more. You can't keep what you have and get more from God. If you give it away, you'll get even more. That's what it means to be a blessing to people. Give and you will get. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, now in glory, said that the famous word in the world is get, but the great word in the church is give. Give, and it shall be given to you a greater measure than you ever do. Give of your time, your talent, your prayers, your love, your fellowship, your encouragement, your food, your clothes, your shelter, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Remember that there is a high cost to discipleship. But we should never be satisfied, and God will never be satisfied, as long as there's one person out in the world who has not heard the invite of God. We're not going to be satisfied. Not at all. So give will be given unto you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. And we're reminded uh, this morning to, to come and also to have a willing heart and 
Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him. All who earnestly seek to repent of their sin and live in peace with their brothers and sisters. That is all. Everyone is welcome at this table. As Reverend Jones said, this is not the United Methodist table. <laughs> it's no person's table. There is no denomination. There is no you or us. We are one another's. So you are all invited this morning. And as we come uh, forward to receive Holy Communion, just a few instructions we will receive by the method of a teaching. So a piece of bread will be placed in your hand, which you can then take and dip in the cup. You can receive both elements together. If you need a gluten-free option, we will have one as well. And as you come forward, you're also invited uh, to give back, to uh, offer up to God what, what you brought with you this morning. If that is your talents, if that is uh, your tithe, if that is your time, your prayers, whatever you have to give, we invite you to bring it forward. And we have uh, two small baskets on either side in which you can place uh, it in. But Christ does invite us all to his table as we seek to repent. And we do that before God and each other in our confession this morning. Let's join together. God, you have given each of us many gifts. But sometimes we cannot recognize what gift we have to share, so we hide it under a bushel. God, you remind us that all gifts are needed. But sometimes we consider ourselves to be convinced that some gifts are more special than others. God, you call us to work, to live, to love together as parts of one body. But sometimes we decide that membership in the body is limited by our understanding. God, for the times we have ignored or mislabeled your gifts, for those times we have cut another off from the body, we offer, we offer words, words of, of repentance. repentance. We, we ask, ask for forgiveness, forgiveness and grace. grace. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. And as a forgiven and reconciled people, we are encouraged to offer one another signs of Christ's peace. So let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. for the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Friends, it is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. Friends, we gather because so many have come before us proclaiming and pointing to the source of our hope, which is Jesus Christ. And so we join with them and with your people on earth and all the company of heaven as we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
And on the night in which he gave himself for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out, the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as the children of God, we are bold to pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. Amen. Friends, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one, for we all partake of the same one. And this cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in Christ's offering for us. The table has been set. You've been invited. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. God of justice, Savior to all. Show us 
send us out, fill us up, send us out, fill us up, send us out, Lord. So if you know a college student who's here already or who's returning to town uh, for the semester, please invite them next week and invite them back for dinner that evening. Um, also, in two weeks, on August 26th, uh, the youth group will be having Bridges, which is a gathering of the parents and youth to talk about the year ahead. And that will be 4.30 to 6.30 here in the fellowship hall. Dinner will be provided, so we invite you back for that. Um, so lots going on. Uh, everything's wonderful. Uh, we'd love for you to be a part of it. If you miss any, grab a bulletin and you can look online to see what's coming up. We try to keep uh, Facebook up to date to remind you of all that's going on. So check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, wherever you get your social media feed. Uh, we'd love to connect with you there. Uh, as well as, can you please make sure to just sign in on one of the attendance pads before you head out so we know who you are and how to get in touch with you and how to connect with you. Uh, there are so many ways that we can serve and we are grateful uh, for all the many ways that we have been uh, blessed this morning. And especially one more time, just thank you so much, Pastor Donnie, for sharing the word with us this morning. We couldn't say thank you enough. But let us join together in our closing song. Uh, Send me out, so please stand up.
will say yes to become a living sacrifice. Remember that this earth is not our home. We're so